like to uh, introduce some of my uh, cohorts for the last six or seven years from Ohio Fair Schools campaign. If you could just rise and stand and then be recognized. Uh, George Hufford from the Cincinnati area. George Palmer. They don't rise very well, do they? <laughs> <laughs> they thought you did their We thought you said raise. <laughs> Richard, Richard Spangler over here, uh, he rises pretty well at about six, four, or five, whatever he is. Uh, Tom McGuire, longtime treasurer, and uh, myself. Is there any other board members here? I don't think so. Um, a number of years ago, Hoffer Schools campaign was formed probably around seven, eight years ago uh, because there was no voice uh, to represent the people uh, in advocating for reforming the public school funding system in particular. There was an organization called Rural in Appalachian that was dealing with the rural communities, but there was nothing involved with the cities on a grassroots basis. Groups that were organized had a self-interest in being organized because they were teachers, which was fine, and, but they get paid. So when you go to the state house and say, well, these teachers, they just want some more money in their pockets and so on and so forth. The superintendents, they just want more money for their schools, whatever, they don't really need it. But what was needed was a citizen's voice, people who were volunteering their time, saying that this is important. And the reason that the number one premise at the very beginning of all this is this is about our kids. Every kid in the state of Ohio is our child when it comes to providing adequate education resources for them. So we can have special programs that, uh, that work for maybe this 5 or this 10 percent or whatever, but we have to keep in mind that who we are serving are people in our state that don't have a voice because they're not old enough to vote, for one thing. So we want to make sure that the citizens of the state are aware of the condition of public school funding and other school issues, and that was why well, how Fair Schools campaign was formed. Nobody had a direct financial <coughs> interest. The organizations that were involved in forming the Ohio Fair Schools campaign, there were some church organizations that were involved, there were some levy supporting organizations, some other ones. So our number one premise is to do right for the children. And I want to urge the legislators here to keep that premise in mind. We really have to do right for the kids. <laughs> Our governor has provided us with some hope. He said he wants to be the education governor. He appears to want to do more about it than just render lip service that we've, that we've seen in the past. Uh, so maybe there is some real hope here, but maybe what the governor is proposing is fine, maybe it gets the job done, maybe it doesn't, maybe it needs to be challenged in certain areas. So I will urge Julian, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as we continue our legacy now, folding into uh, education voters, the, the, the situation was different for us in, uh, in the past couple of years. There were other organizations coming on stream, they were better funded, and uh, we got our director elected to the state representatives. All right. All right. So we didn't have to pay her anymore. We're going to let all the taxpayers pay. <laughs> but she's going to be a very strong voice for the kids. And she obviously has the background to know what the issues are with regard to education. So from my standpoint and uh, raising that voice seven years ago, let's keep those kids up front. This is for the kids. They don't have votes. They don't have they can't go to the ballot box. But we have to do what's right by them. And I would encourage uh, education voters to continue this legacy, as we know. And we talked about it as part of the reason that we wanted to put these organizations together. Thank you. All right.